Hi, I'm Bob Berman, author of Zoom. How everything moves from atoms and galaxies to blizzards and bees. I'd say germs surprised me because I had no idea until I researched this book that bacteria by whipping tail-like structures called flagella actually move up to a hundred times faster than fish do relative to their size and that a germ can swim across an entire countertop in an hour. I mean no wonder germs and diseases you know spread if you can if you can go a couple of feet in an hour I had no idea they were that fast. And uh, I also realized something very basic, and that is speed really depends on how many body lengths you move per second. For example, a giant jumbo jet, a 747, let's say, looks pretty slow when it's coming in for a landing because it's so large that it only shifts its entire length once per second. So it almost looks stationary if you're watching it approach whereas fish typically move 10 body lengths per second and mice move many body lengths per second. So they look like they're really fast, but no mouse has ever gone faster than about 8 miles an hour. That's not really very fast. But they look fast because they shift their body lengths that quickly. So perceived speed is one thing and actual speed is another. I went to uh, Quito in uh, Ecuador because it's the only major city that's right on the equator. And the equator is where our planet spins the fastest. That's where you or I are carried along at 1,038 miles an hour. At the poles, we don't move at all. We're stationary. So what happens at that place? What, what's the consequence? One of them is that the overhead sun and moon and stars move fastest through the sky than anywhere else. Another is that you weigh a little less because almost like in a carnival ride, you're almost hurled off the planet a little bit. So uh, a big guy like me weighs about a pound less than you would up in Alaska. But the big surprise is that at the equator, the government built this giant monument and they have loud salsa dancing and loud music. There's a general distrust of silence in that area, by the way, so it's not surprising to have ear splits splitting music at all times. But when you get there, there's a line painted on the ground. It's more than painted. It's set into the ground, stones. And tourists, mostly South Americans, love to come there and get their picture taken with one leg in one hemisphere and one in the other. You know, straddling the world, standing at the middle of the world. That's what they call the place, the middle of the world. But it turns out the government built this in the wrong place. It's not really the equator. They built it before there was GPS. And the real equator is about a quarter mile down the road. So if you walk there over this potholed uh, dirt driveway, and it's 10,000 feet up, so you're kind of panning if you're not used to the, the elevation. And then there's a competing museum, a private museum, that has its own separate equator line where they do demonstrations like showing how water swirls down drains in opposite directions in the two hemispheres. They have a, a woman set up with a basin and then they pull the plug and the water goes down one way and then she pulls the basin by the way it doesn't even have wheels so it just scrapes along the concrete and everybody's holding their ears it's amazing they do this day in and day out every 15 minutes that they wouldn't just get a giant basin on wheels but so everybody steps over and then they fill it with water they pull the plug again and now it swirls down the other way and everybody's really excited by this but you know it's fake. That can't be. It's impossible. The Coriolis effect doesn't work like that. So after the crowds left, I said, hey, can I perform the demonstration for the next group? And she looked really alarmed, and she called the director over who spoke English well enough. He just laughed. He found the whole thing very funny, and he said, yeah, you can do it, but you have to do it the right way. You have to pour the water in from this side uh, when you're on this side of the equator, and then you pour the water in the other way when you're on the other side. So in other words, there's some residual water motion, and that's what makes the different directions that it's swirling down. And I said, but you're faking the whole thing. And he just laughed and laughed. He said, well, maybe we are, but how else are we going to demonstrate the effecto coriolis, the coriolis effect? He said, and besides, we only say it's a demonstration. It's not really science. I even did the math for, the, for this chapter. 
and uh, calculated that in, let's say, a toilet bowl, when you flush a toilet bowl, the difference in rotation speed between one side of the bowl and the other amounts to the speed of the hour hand of a kitchen clock. Mm. Not the minute hand, the hour hand of a clock. So that's not zero, but it sure isn't enough to give uh, 10 pounds of water any kind of push. So the reason water goes down a, a toilet in one direction or the other, it's the direction that the water comes into it from those little holes hidden in the porcelain underneath that, that lip there. It has nothing to do with the rotation of Earth.